A while back, I made a video about QYLD, the NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. Now, I'm not a big fan of this ETF, but a lot of other people are, and they didn't like what I had to say about that ETF. So it's my most unpopular video with like 206 downvotes and 146 upvotes. So I'm going to go ahead and link that up there. So if you want to go give it another downvote, I guess it's right there for you. I do want to help investors with their, you know, journey towards financial independence and all that. So that's why I made the video. And I think that it's important not to get your too focused on income and not, not, um, put any emphasis on the price appreciation. And I think that's a problem that QYLD that has. And even though it has this big yield, it doesn't outperform the S and P 500. But today we have a new ETF. It's JEPI, the JP Morgan Equity Premium ETF. And this one is a product by JP Morgan that has covered calls and price appreciation. So maybe this one will fare better and be better for our long term wealth than QYLD. Good morning, everybody. Hope we're doing really good today. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm Justin. I like to talk about dividend investing, income from options, financial independence, and anything else related to money. So if you like money, you should uh, subscribe to my channel. And then if you can't subscribe to the channel, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That'd be the next best thing. Investors love income. They love dividends. They love options. Options are more popular than they've ever been because of the help of Robin Hood and Wall Street bets. Uh, but some investors don't have the time or to dedicate to managing option positions. They don't have, you know, the, the know-how to understand, you know, what all the, the delta and the gamma and the theta and all that stuff mean. Or maybe they don't have just the capital to manage uh, option portfolios. Something like, um, the S and P 500 or SPY, SPY is trading at about $400 right now. So if you wanted to sell options on that, it would take $40,000 to do it. That's where these covered call ETFs come in, where you can sell or the ETF can sell the options on something like the S and P 500. And then you receive the income. These ETFs help investors diversify their risk by spreading all their option premium to different well-known companies. And then they avoid the temptation of selling options on meme stocks and EV companies that don't have vehicles and they don't have customers. This new ETF is the JP Morgan equity premium income ETF, uh, ticker JEPI, and it's a really new ETF. And the idea is that they want to get option premium income from it and some price appreciation. It's designed to provide current income while maintaining prospects for capital appreciation. Then their approach generates income through a combination of selling options and investing in large cap stocks, seeking to deliver a monthly income stream from associated option premiums and stock dividends. Constructs a diversified low volatility equity portfolio through a proprietary research process designed to identify over and undervalued stocks with attractive risk and return characteristics. Seeks to deliver a significant portion of the returns associated with the S&P 500 index with less volatility in addition to monthly income. And that sounds really great. You know, we get some price appreciation and also monthly income and, you know, less volatility, the S and P 500. So all that really sounds great so far. JP right now trades at about $60 and has an expense ratio of 0.35%. And that's pretty low. And that's really reasonable considering that you have dividend aristocrat ETFs that have the same expense ratio. And this is definitely more of a specialized product than something like a dividend aristocrat ETF. Its yield right now is a little above 8%. And you look at the dividends paid out, 
it's a little more variable than something like QYLD. It's not going to be the same amount every month. Some months it's going to be about 30 cents. Some months it's going to be 40 cents. Some months it'll be 50 cents. And our top 10 holdings, we look here, there's a few companies that we recognize and a couple of things that we don't recognize. So we have Google there, Target, Accenture, Microsoft, and UPS. But then we have these other things, this SPX 9, 10, 1, 7, and 8. And what are these? Well, these are uh, equity linked notes, ELN. And these things, these ELNs, essentially they're the covered calls in this ETF. Now, if we look at the prospectus, it'll kind of give us a little more information on what ELNs are. In order to generate income, the fund may invest up to 20% of its net assets in ELNs. ELNs are structured as notes that are issued by counterparties, including banks, broker dealers, or other affiliates, and that are designed to offer a return linked to the underlying instrument within the ELN. ELNs in which the fund invests are derivative, derivative instruments that are specifically designed to combine the economic characteristics of the S&P 500 index and written call options in a single note form. Now we go all the way back to our beginning economics class. A note is a debt instrument. It's something that people owe you. This fund should not lose money on this 20% of the fund that's in ELNs. That's guaranteed by the counterparty, whoever that is. And then they're going to take that money and they're going to sell the covered calls against, uh, sell the covered calls against the S and P 500. And then we will get back premium. And then whoever guarantees this, these notes, they're going to keep a bit of premium as well. It's called the uh, participation rate. Like uh, these ELNs might get 70% of the premium while the guarantor or the guarantor, the person who's backing these notes, they keep like 30% of the premium or some sort of ratio like that. So in theory, as long as the counterparty doesn't go bankrupt or we have some sort of fi uh, financial weapon of mass destruction event, these ELNs, should you know give all our money back plus that covered call premium it's a little complicated and i think that's the best way to understand it and explain it is they're guaranteeing our money we give them the money to sell covered calls they give us most of the premium and they take a little of the premium from themselves taxes on jeppy are a little more simple as well uh tax information to the extent that the fund makes distributions those distributions will be taxed as ordinary income or capital gains, except when your investment is in an IRA or retirement account. So there's no return of capital like something with QYLD. Now we have to compare performance versus JEPI and QYLD. Now JEPI was only incepted in May of 2020, so it's about 13 months old. It's a bit newer. I wish we had more history on this thing, but we just don't. Now, if we took $10,000, invested it into Jeppy on the day of inception, and we took the same 10,000 bucks, invested it in QYLD, Jeppy would have returned about 28%, 12,807 bucks, and QYLD would be up about 22%, and you'd have $12,283. So Jeppy will outperform a little bit, or at least it did in the past 13 months compared to QYLD. But the big difference is in the income. Jeppy's income, you would have received $918 versus QYLD, that it gave you $1,400 in income over that same time. So maybe if you need more income now, you might have to look at QYLD and that might be a better idea for you. But if you have some time to go to reinvest and build and compound your wealth, maybe Jeppy's a better way to go. Some people say 
that you're not supposed to compare an income product to a growth product. But if the growth product and the income product are based off of the same thing, say Jeppy is based off the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 is the S&P 500, you can compare these two because you can always compare things to the S&P 500 because it's always a choice. And so I'm going to compare this income product to the S&P 500. If you would have took that same 10,000 bucks, invested it into the S&P 500, you'd be up about 41% and you'd have about $14,100. In this 13 months, you'd, you'd, be, you'd have over 10% more money if you had invested in the S&P 500 versus Jeppy. Now, it's not a great comparison because Jeppy hasn't been around that long. And we'd really like to see how this thing would have performed in the COVID correction and may even way back in 2008 in that financial recession. As far as building wealth goes, I think Jeppy, it does look promising. Maybe if you really need more income now, maybe you could choose QYLD. Um, but I think longer time over 10, 15 years of reinvesting, you might have a better chance of building more wealth with Jeppy, but it's still too early to tell. It's a very new product. It's only like a year old. We don't have much to go on on Jeppy. Are any of you invested in Jeppy? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you're not and you learned something, go ahead and give this thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Then I want you to go have a good day, all right? Justin out.